Hi Church, welcome to Agape's online experience. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you and for all those tuning in as well. Well, let's begin with a time of worship and just celebrating our Lord, our God, our Savior. Hello everybody. I hope all of you are still doing well and staying safe at home. It has been around two weeks not having uh, church services, but really thankful for the advancements of technology that we are able to have online sermons and online worship. And as we are facing a pandemic, everything seems very scary, very uncertain, and it's never ending. But let's come back and put our focus onto God.
Welcome back. What a great time of worship. Uh, you know, we are evolving as a church uh, as this time. You know, it's, it's something completely unprecedented. And we're moving uh, a lot of things online. So we want to encourage you to get online so that you can follow what's going on in church. We've planned three times a week uh, for you to be engaged with something that's happening in church. So on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., we're going to be having our live prayer meeting on Facebook Live and our Agape Community Church Facebook page. So get engaged, be a part of the worship, uh, pray even in your homes or wherever you are, just engage with what's going on as well. And on Friday nights, we have Faith Friday, which is a time of discipleship, a time of teaching, and a time of just engaging uh, God's Word and some discipleship programs as well. This will also be on our Agape page, our Facebook page as well. And, we, and it will also be mirrored on our Instagram page as well. And on Sunday mornings, we're going to have our worship service at 9 a.m., which will be on our website as well as Agape uh, Community Church uh, Facebook page as well. So let me encourage you, get online and get engaged with what's going on in church. It's a great time also now to give to the Lord. You know, your tithes and your offerings. Let's continue to sow into God's kingdom by giving online. Uh, the, the account numbers are going to be displayed shortly. So take note of it, take a photograph of it, and make sure that uh, you, you, you continue to give your, your tithes and your offering online. Let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank you, Lord, that in spite of everything, oh Lord, you are our provider. Lord, in spite of every situation, Lord, we just surrender to you and we recognize, O oh Lord God Almighty, that you are our King, our Lord, our provider. So, Lord, even as we sow into your kingdom, even as we worship you in our tithes and our offering, we want to give you praise, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let's welcome our speaker for this morning, Reverend Joshua Young. Give him a big round of applause as he preaches. God bless you. Hi, good morning, church. It has been a while since we last met, and I really miss each and every one of you. Really, I really appreciate you for logging into our Agape website uh, to hear this sermon together, and let's do this together, yeah? Now, my, the sermon title uh, this morning is Scattered Yet Connected. Scattered Yet Connected. If you have your Bible, please turn to me to Romans chapter 16, verse 5. Romans chapter 16, verse 5. The Bible records, Greet also the church that meets in their house. Greet also the church that meets in their house. Here you see Paul is actually greeting the church that meets at their house. So you may be wondering at this point, what church? Whose house? Always look at the context. Okay, right now we want to look at the context to get a full picture. As always, I've always said in my sermon, context determines meaning. All right? Context determines meaning. This is chapter 16, the last chapter of Romans, where Paul is signing off. And he was actually sending his greeting to various people. In these words, he was sending his greeting to Priscilla and Aquila, who are co-workers of Paul. So at the same time, he sent his greetings to the church that actually meets in their house. So obviously, the church that Paul is greeting are the people. He was greeting the people, not the building, of course, because you can't say good morning to the wall or chairs. You, know, you always say good morning to the church, the people. So Paul is referring to the assembly of the people of Christ, the church. He wasn't referring to the place or the building they were meeting at that point of time. He was referring to the people, the disciples of Christ as the church, who simply used Priscilla's and Aquila's house as their meeting place. And this isn't the only time where Paul refers 
to the people as a church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 19, the Bible records, The church in the province of Asia sends you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord. So does the church that meets at their house. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 15, Give my greetings to the brothers and sisters at Lodicia and to Nympha and the church at her house. So the church Paul is referring to here is the assembly of the people. Let me make this very clear once again. The people are the church. The people are the church. Not the house they were meeting in then. Nothing wrong with referring to the house or the church building as a church, uh, uh, as a church for it is used for worship gatherings. But the point that Paul is trying to stress over here is this. Ultimately, it is the people that are the church, not the place. It's the people. And this is in line with the scripture of what Jesus himself said, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be with them. This is Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. So regardless of whether we are meeting at home now in our living room with our family members or through online service with other family members, remember this church, in Christ, we are the church. We are the church. So wherever we gather in Jesus' name, wherever we are, regardless of a physical place or a virtual space, we are the church. And I want to say this very clearly. The space we meet in Jesus' name becomes the space where Jesus reigns. Let me say that again. The space we meet in Jesus' name becomes the space where Jesus reigns. Amen? So church, take heart. I want to encourage all of you Agapians, just like the early church who were scattered everywhere across the provinces in their nation and the surrounding nation, they were all still connected to one another because they're all connected to the one. Jesus Christ. So, for, uh, so in Christ, they were all connected as one family. Just as Paul exchanged personal greetings and didn't let distance separate them, let us also exchange greetings with one another still. Continue to show concern, not just for our own family, but also the church family and the families in our community, in our neighborhood, especially those in it. Just because we don't meet in church, we don't stop being the church. The church are the people. The church are the people. Now, with the extended MCO and the likelihood of us not being able, being able to mass gather for church services for a longer period of time, we need to anchor ourselves in Christ and to build up our faith through this concept that we are scattered yet connected. All right? Scattered yet connected. Because we, the people, are the church, we need to do three things. So, very quickly, the first one stay connected to Christ, who is the head. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23, the Bible records, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in everywhere. So church, take ownership of our personal relationship with God. Stay connected to him, for he is the head of the church and us, the people. Jesus is our head because we are his body. It is not the responsibility of anyone else but ours alone to grow our faith and to grow in our understanding of who Christ is. Regardless of whether we are able to mass, uh, mass gather uh, as a church or whether we are gathering at home even like right now, the responsibility lies on us. We need to carry our own cross. The fellowship of the church may help us, may support us in our faith journey to grow, but ultimately, our faith is one of a personal relationship with Christ. We need to walk with Him and walk with Him alone. We need to put intentional personal effort in our own growth. Perhaps now more than ever with uh, things that's removed from us, we really need to focus to take ownership of our faith and really to use whatever means that we can to grow our faith church, grow our faith. So take responsibility of own growth back into our hands. Take this responsibility of family's growth back into our hands. Stay connected to Christ. And remember, Christ is always with you and Christ will fight for your victory. Amen? So stay connected to Christ the head. One. Secondly, stay connected to the church, the body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 24 to 27, it says here, But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there shall be no division in the body, but that is part of equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ. Each of you is a part of it. 
the Bible says. So Well Church, this has been very clear from the beginning that we are the church. The people are the body of Christ. We are all scattered yet connected. Scattered yet connected. For this, I would like to do some drawing for my illustration. So join me in this. All right. Church, this is what I will do. I will try to draw. I'm not very good with drawing, but uh, just be patient with me. Yeah, I'll try this. So just imagine with me, this is the head, and the body looks something like this. All right, so just imagine this is us, okay? Like I say, be patient with my drawing. Now, imagine this is the head, which means this is Jesus as the head. All right? And where are we? We are the body. So all of us are actually all scattered, yet we are connected as one. So some of us will be staying in Oakland, some of us in Rasa, some of us in Ke Ke Kemayan, Kepayang, where else? Um, Senawang, Astu, Sendayan, uh, Rahang. Okay, all of us are scattered everywhere. Yeah, not forgetting, let me just put it here. Not forgetting Nila, yeah, our Nila church is there. Okay, just imagine we are all everywhere and in uh, Seremban, we have a lot of taman, you know, all the Seremban garden. Uh, all the different bouquets, you know, bouquet lemon, bouquet uh, kaya, wherever you stay, okay, galena, all of us are separated everywhere. And as you can see, regardless of where we are, we are still connected. We are scattered, yet connected because we are one body. We are connected to the head, we are connected to Jesus as the head, and we are connected to one another as his body. And this is Jesus' body. We are one. So over here, you can see that all of us are really actually one family. And let me just draw the heart here. Huh? And the heartbeat of the church, the heartbeat of Christ should be this. I call it the two greats. Okay? The two greats. One is the great commandment, which is to love God and love people. Secondly, the great commission, which is to make disciples. All right? Jesus, the head, all of us scattered yet connected as one body. We're all one family. And our heartbeat, when the heart is connected to the head, the Jesus heartbeat begins to build, begin to pump in our heartbeat. Jesus' heartbeat becomes our heartbeat as well. So that the two greats is always, always in our heart. Love God, love people, and make disciples in all that we do. All right? Come, let's come back to this side. So, as you can see from the illustration, the head is Jesus and the body is us, all right? So, as you can see from the illustration just now, okay, none of us is isolated. Regardless of where we are, we are all connected as one body. So, none of us is isolated. There's no Lone Ranger Christian. Let me say this, uh, there's no such thing as stand-alone Christian. The moment we are connected to Christ, we are all connected as one family of Christ, the church. Just like the moment we are married to our spouse, immediately we're connected to our spouse family. We become a part of each other's family. So likewise, church, the moment we are connected to Christ, the moment we accept Jesus into our life, the moment we accept, to, we, we are connected to Christ, we are connected to one another. We are all one family in Christ, one body in Christ. Amen? So as one family, we're all called to have equal concern for one another. For this, Agapians, allow me to applaud you for a job well done, all of you are very good in doing life together on keeping uh, in touch with one another, even during this time of MCO. I know that many of you are, 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 are through your own ways, you are actually finding ways to connect with one another in different ways, whether it is through a video call, online meeting, or simply just picking up the phone and calling someone to check on them to see how they are doing. You guys are amazing. Keep up the good work. Now, I even know some of you actually went to the, went the extra mile. You actually cook meals. Some of you bake breads, uh, buy fruits, or even deliver groceries. I heard some of you even buy medicine to those in need, whether they're within our church family or even in the co our community. I think that is very good, and you guys are simply amazing. You have done a good job, and may I cheer you on to continue to do so as long as it's within the boundary of MCO and the safety of ourselves 
and others. All right? So keep up the good work. Stay connected to the church as the church. Now, thirdly, let me just say this. Stay connected to the community. For this, I don't even need to use a particular word to actually emphasize on this because we all know God loves people. Jesus came to seek those who are lost so that they may be found. Jesus is always about redeeming the lost. He's always about redeeming people. And he passed this mandate to us, the church, his body. So if you look back at our key chapter in chapter 16, we are still in chapter 16, you look at Romans chapter 16, and you read the rest of the verses, you will find that Paul was greeting so many people from everywhere. He never lost sight of Christ, and he never lost sight of what Christ is all about, redeeming people. It's always about redeeming people. This is why Agape is not just a church in our community, but also a church for our community. For this mandate, we are always better together. There's great strength in numbers, yeah? So together, uh, as some of you know, we have actually launched this Agape Care Package about, uh, uh, I think, two or three weeks ago, we have launched this. So together, we managed to deliver over 80 care packages to over 80 families, which consists of uh, various dry food like rice, oil, uh, uh, vegetables, hygiene products, masks, uh, canned food or other basic necessity to those in it, which include over 20 refugee families who are actually off the radar and the government may not be able to reach them. So we really appreciate Agapians for coming together to do this and to bless them and to help them just to ease their burden a, 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 a little bit until this MCO is lifted. Now, we also donated 5,000 pieces of raincoats to the frontliners in Sedaman GH. We also partner with our STM to prepare and donate 900 uh, face shields to the hospital. And we pray that through this crisis, people can still know who Christ is. So church, continue to be connected to the community, and for this, we're always better together. So these are just some of the things that we have done together as a church during this short period of time, and bravo and well done. Due to the extension of this MCO, we know that many are not able to get back on their feet in time. So we are launching the second round of Agape Care Package for the following month to help ease those who are suffering from this MCO. So if you're keen to participate, to join us and to know what you can do, please, uh, uh, please uh, don't hesitate actually to let any of our staff know or simply leave a message on our Agape Facebook page. Or to make it simple, just uh, WhatsApp myself or even Pastor Anne and to say that you are keen for this second round of Agape Care Package and we appreciate you for joining our hearts together for this. And church, always stay tuned to Agape Facebook page for weekly updates, all right? So take this unique uh, MCO opportunity to stay connected to Christ, stay connected to the church and stay connected to the community, all right? It's because we're all scattered yet connected. All right, last, I just want to say this as well. Uh, so for this purpose, we have actually launched three new online platforms, Wednesday Worship and Prayer Live on our Facebook page, Faith Friday short videos also on our Facebook page, and you can use that uh, for various purposes, whether it's for personal devotion or even as your connect group discussion, you can use those things to build yourself up. And thirdly, it's our Sunday online service, as you know, it's in our, in our Agape website. All this platform is to actually empower us and to support us in our faith journey to stay connected. So I encourage all of you to join us weekly as you always do. All right? So church, make full use of these platforms to stay connected. And remember, regardless of the physical or virtual space, the space we meet in Jesus' name becomes the space where Jesus reigns. Okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, last, let's, let me just uh, say this from my heart. I know that many of you are really looking forward to the day where we can all gather again as a church in our church agape building. Because there's a great strength in numbers and nothing beats coming together as a family. Nothing beats that. Okay, we can worship God, we can do all these things at home, but nothing beats the feeling of all of us coming together once again as a family. The connection is real, our relationship is real, and we really long to those days and we miss the fellowship. And I know many of you do as well. Church, don't misunderstand me. Just because we, the people, are the church, it doesn't mean that we don't need to gather as a church one day. Because the Bible commanded us to, you can just read the book of Acts, and we have said it many times in our sermon, God has always called us to be committed to one another and to gather together wherever we can. So we still gather when we can, whether it's at home for now or in the church main century one day soon. To those who wonder, since we are the church and we're all connected without a church gathering, 
do we still need to gather for church service after this? This is a real question, right? We can worship at home, we can read the Bible at home, we can pray at home. Since we are the church, regardless of where we are, where we meet, why do I still need to go for church gathering? Now for this, let me just answer the question with an illustration. It's like saying I can cook by myself, I can eat in restaurant, or order takeaway to have my meals. Why do I need to gather and eat with my family? We eat with our family because we are family. We don't eat as a family for the meals. We eat together because we are a family. So church, we gather to worship, we praise God, we pray with and pray for one another, we serve, we fellowship, we love, we care, we listen to God's word and respond to God's word in our weekly service in our church century. Not because we can't do all these things without a church gathering. We do all this because we are a family. And as a family, we long to gather together. We long together because we are a family together. So I hope I will make that very clear. And this is why, even as we gather at home for now, we still long for the day that we still can gather as a church. More importantly, if you think about this very closely, without other people in our life, without other people, we can't fulfill the two greats, the great commandment and the great commission, which is to love God, love people, and to make disciples. Without other people, we can't fulfill this. Okay? And this is why we need to still gather as a church one day. All right? And let me say this very clearly. It's never, it's never been, yeah? It's, it's never been about being a consumer Christian who only thinks of what we can gain from the church, but it's always about being a contributing Christian who always think about what we can give as the church. Let me say this again. It's never about being a consumer Christian who only thinks about what we can gain from the church, but it's about being a contributing Christian who thinks about what we can give as the church. Now, we are scattered, get connected, but soon we shall be gathered and united once again. So church, stay connected during this time. Stay connected to the head, stay, connect, uh, stay connected to Christ, stay connected to the church, and stay connected to the community. Do what we can to stay connected. Till we meet again, Agapians, take care, and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you, Pastor Joshua Young, for that amazing word of encouragement. So I just want to encourage you, church, continue to be connected to what's going on online, connected to your connect groups, connected to the people around you. We are still part of the church family. You know, and I'll see you on Wednesday at 8 p.m. for prayer meeting online as well. God bless you and have a great week ahead.